This dude just found a huge flush of chanterelles. Everywhere. It does have forked gills, but these are true gills. A true chanterelle does not have Alrighty folks, today we're on a mission. Got my nephew Dylan up. He's a learning bushcrafter and forager and homesteader. He's got a big garden at home. He's up for about 10 days. Today, we're out looking for chanterelle mushrooms. See some of them are kind of dry and old looking. They're not too good to eat. So I like the softer ones here and um, some of them also have bug damage. So those aren't good to get either. And when we're getting them, it's good to use a knife so we don't just rip them out of the ground. That damages the mycelium and stops more from growing. When we're walking around, use a mesh bag. It has little holes in it so the spores can fall out of the mushrooms onto the ground and more can grow. We're finding in this particular forest that the chanterelles are mainly associating with birch trees, big, large, old birch trees, as opposed to the pines, white pines that you would also find them growing around. You got some? Yeah. Kind of small and the other ones are uh, a bit old. So let's probably leave them, come back in a couple days. Yeah. Yeah, those will be ready in a couple days. For sure. Keep hunting. Oh, oh yeah. It's kind of sticked out against the green moss. Yeah. It looks nice. Open your bag up there. How many got so far? Yeah, have 20 maybe. Yeah. Just some on the side of the stream there. I'm gonna go get them. Okay. Oh, those are different. Like inside the road. Seriously? We found a false chanterelle. So I want to show the difference between these two. Break this guy off. So when you're looking at the false chanterelle, you can see it does have forked gills, but these are true gills. The true chanterelle does not have true gills. They follow down the stem. They don't end in a perfect circle at the bottom of the cap. They are forked as well. And also, with the false chanterelles, they will stain your fingers with the orange that is on there. I don't know if that's going to show up too well on, on the little camera here, but it, it will uh, it'll stain your fingers orange. There you can see now. Whereas with the true chanterelles, they won't. Hatch here, and they're all right. It's 
pretty cool that so much wild food so close by. Seems to be something in just about every season except the dead of winter. But that's why we harvest chaga in the dead of winter because it gives us something to do as far as foraging goes. Found a very nice size patch of them here. Tons of them. And so these mushrooms, and you got a big bag full of them like this, smell like apricots. They're just, they're so tasty. Why don't you just dump them out here, Bill, and we'll have a look at, look at the haul we got for probably about two hours. Three. Three, three hours of picking. And we'll send a bunch of those home with you. Mm -hmm. Share with the family down in Southern Ontario. And Amanda and I will end up drying some. And we'll eat a bunch fresh tonight too. That is a really nice haul, buddy.